apart. Uh, that extra gear, the first three steps. Huge strides in the performance that I might not be the player I am today. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Gear. And uh, for the first time ever in Behind the Gear history, we've got two videos going at the same time. This is all part of the new uh, the new age we're in right now, the COVID, the corona. We're adapting. We're, we're morphing. You know what I mean? We're getting things going. We got Kevy back on with uh, the big wa- clock on his wall. So in case no one knows what time it is, you can check the clock on the yeah. back behind Kevy. And we got uh, Patrick Ouellette today. So Patrick Ouellette. Um, a native of the uh, Quebec, and um, but Pat has been a buddy of ours obviously for a long time, and uh, has a pretty cool hockey story as far as where he came from, where he went, being a little French boy used to eat his boogers on the playground to uh, going on and coaching CIS to the Nationals, and we're going to talk about kind of the the uh, the upsetting, kind of heartbreaking um, uh, situation that you guys got into this year, just with everything going on in in, uh, in society, but. Before that, uh, where's Patrick Goulet from? So, Uli, uh, welcome to the show, first of all. You got anything that you want to do? You want to pump my tires or anything like that at all? Are you average guy, I would say. Pretty decent <laughs> hockey coach. <laughs> and, uh, so, I think, uh, I think you're well-known around London in the hockey scene, so I don't, I don't need to pump your no, tires. No, you don't have to pump my tires. You do that, um, you, you do that on your own. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> So, and Uli, if, guess, I, if, I came guess, up, if I bumped into you on the street and I said, uh, hey, Uls, uh, where, where's home for you? Like not That's now, but movie. like, where are you from? Like, where were you born when you were like little pew? I'm I'm born. Uh, I'm from a small town called Bay Como, northern Quebec. Uh, there's a Q uh, hockey team as part of the Dracar. Yep. Um. So, a really small town, actually, to about roughly twenty thousand people. So, uh, and yeah, just played minor hockey there growing up, uh, all the way up to till mid jet, and then I, I I thought I was kind of done. I was getting ready to play beer leagues and. And go to to Asia and go to college and and I got a phone call to go to a showcase in Quebec City and I ended up playing some junior hockey out west in in DC and in Alberta so I played there for three week three years uh, some some BG uh, BCHL and AJHL and then um, I was really trying to get an MPA scholarship and things didn't pan out and I ended up playing in a college league in Alberta. At the ACAC, and I played at Augustana as an affiliate with um, with the University of Alberta. It was a small little league, like eight teams, and it was pretty good, uh, pretty good hockey. And uh, out of that, I had a pretty decent uh, season, and uh, had a couple scouts from the CIS or U Sports and all, but CIS back then, and I got to. Um, to, to, to have a couple offers and then I ended up choosing uh, Western. So I have been, uh, I've been here ever since we're talking 14, 15 years back now and played four years here for, uh, for Western and had uh, four successful years as well. Like on, on the ice as well as uh, the classroom. And I really loved the city. And after that, I ended up playing one season in Europe and I was in uh, Serbia and uh, in the Slovenian league, so which was a great experience. The caliber of hockey wasn't the greatest, but got to travel, got to see the world a little bit by while I was there. And I decided to come back, and I met Kevin, and I decided to stay uh, to stay in London. <laughs> <laughs> your your life partner. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, that's pretty well, true actually so basically like you summed up like 20 years of your life in about <laughs> yeah. two, two minutes from, there. from one <laughs> question I like that <laughs> that, was was awesome. a, that might be the most so you want me to expand on that or I thought it was, <laughs> that was on the clock oh, sorry. Yeah. no no but I think a couple things I want to kind of highlight with you is you're 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 very athletic, obviously, and and growing up, I know maybe you weren't the best player on your teams, and it, maybe you didn't play AAA or were the best players on the AAA teams, but you were a multi sport athlete, meaning you played ball, you played, you guys had a lot of sports going on in the small community of Bay Como. So for you, how important is it now when you're dealing with young kids? And we'll get into more of your coaching because you know you kind of glazed over it, but you've coached a lot of junior B and a lot of you know players in the local areas as well as going on to coach youth sports. Um, but how important is it for you right now and the, kind of the message that you send to young players that are kind of that 12, 13, 14 to, to not focus. Yeah. Hockey's a big focus for a lot of them, but go play other sports, go, you know, get good at throwing or catching a ball and, and different things like that. You know? Well, before I get to what I think about it, I just, I, I, I just want to, um, to, to tell a story about, I, I went to one of the, with the hockey Academy, I teach all of my, all my high school. 
we, we, we went to Ottawa to, uh, to have a seminar. Like all, all the teachers, they have to go every year. And they they kind of gave us like uh, meetings and we have like guest speakers like uh, um, Willie Desjardins was there as a keynote speaker, one of the former uh, Canucks uh, yes, coach. Yes. And yeah. so there, there, there's a, a bunch of keynote speakers that come and they kind of talk to us on how to run our the academy throughout the years. And one of the most interesting uh, speaker that was that we met one year was the, the strength and conditioning coach from the Ottawa Senators. And that was the one, the first thing he told us was as, as young athletes or young players, you need to, you need to, to, to learn to do other stuff, right? So before you can skate or before you need to know how to run, right? And it, it's just the one thing that, that stuck to me. And he works with professional athletes, right? Like it, they, they in and they out. And, It was, it was like, it's unbelievable. The amount of parents that come to me, it's like, you got to train my, my, my son or my daughter to be a pro hockey player. And well, and the like, you know, first question he asked the parents, like, so what other sports does, does your daughter or, or son play? And the parents just look at him like, well, he wants to be a hockey player. He's going to, he's playing hockey. That's it. That's so and it's like true. most of those kids, like they don't, they don't know how to run. They don't know how to jump. They don't know. And like you said, like, right. Like, You don't know they don't know how to throw, catch a ball, and it's, it's pretty tough to make to make athlete or elite hockey players when the the, the, the players aren't athletes, overall athletes, right? Yeah. So it, it's just one one story that stuck with me since since I met the, the the this guy in Ottawa is let your son or daughter play different sports, and it, it's true, right? Like, it, and we hear it all in the news or on, online with like. For, former NHL players like Wayne Gretzky is a big advocate for like let them play lacrosse, let them play soccer. Like we all did that uh, growing up, and nobody was specializing in the sport when we were 12 years old. Yeah. And, and I think it's 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 such uh, an important part of becoming a, an elite hockey players, but just an overall good athlete, being able to do different things. And and one one other thing on the side note about the the, the Ottawa. Uh, strength, strength and conditioning coach was uh, it prevents a lot of injury, right? Because your body, your body is not supposed to to, to to be in a skating stripe 12 months of the year. This is not a natural movement. And I was really impressed when how he was explaining things like this is you, you, you can be pushing in a stride 12 months of the year, like your knees, your groin, your hips, they all, they all kind of, They all cut. They, they don't. They're not supposed to do that. And I'm repeating myself, but that's that's. No, that's, it makes sense, man. For sure. I think that's that's yeah. what he was saying. So right, like you're supposed to be running. You're supposed to be kicking. You're supposed to be jumping. You're supposed to be other stuff than just playing hockey. So, to just to kind of recap everything on the question is, let let the kids play other sports. Let them be baseball players in the summer. Let them play soccer player in the summer, and then they want to pick up hockey. Um, in August and September when the hockey schools are starting and the, the camps are starting and stuff like that. Then uh, the other thing, injury prevention, but you've coached, I've coached, Kevin, you've co you're, you're coaching before too. Is how it, it becomes hard to, to, to engage the kids at every practice, third, Tuesday night practice, Thursday night practice. For them, it's just another practice. They had like 10, 12, 15, 20 practice like over the, the the past two or three weeks with like hockey academy or yeah, whether yeah. It's, it's practice, it's high school hockey, it's like minor hockey practice, it's, it's, it's all over the place. And just to get them engaged and, and uh, hungry all the time, it's really, really tough as a coach uh, standpoint. It's kind of weird, right? I think like if you think back on years, of like we hear stories of Bobby Orr and know he's maybe a little bit before our time, but You know, and they were all kids who didn't have ice in the summer. So they played, they went swimming, they played basketball or uh, baseball and lacrosse and all this stuff. And Gretzky, same thing. And then we almost went through a shift where when rinks started keeping ice in 12 months a year and there's more opportunity to play hockey 12 months a year, probably 10, 15 years ago, kids did hockey 12 months a year. And it seems like now we're trying to get back to, now don't get me wrong, there's still lots of parents and players doing hockey 12 months a year, but we're trying to really preach now, no, be a multi sport athlete. Because to your point, You know, and Kev, you can talk to this too. We see some of the players that we work with in the summers at the NHL level, and most of those players are guys and girls are 
like they they're athletes, man. You give them like we always joke about this, but you give them a basketball, they'll figure it out in an hour and they can play a little bit. You give them a soccer ball, they'll figure it out in an hour and they can play. You know, they're just athletic. They can run, they can kick, they can shoot. They they're coordinated. You know. No, I agree. And we talked we talked about it a bunch before. It's funny how you you know whether I'm with you on here talking to someone or I you know listen to the podcast when you have other people on, but. Anytime this comes up, this like doesn't matter. You got Uli on for the first time, and you got other coaches, other strength guys, other skill guys. The same stuff keeps coming up. They keep saying the same things, and I think it's important for some of these parents to start, you know, recognizing that this is important for their kids because it's easy for us to say it, but it's important for the kids to do it. You know what's hard though? To, as a, to as a, I totally agree with you. You know what's really hard as a parent though? <clears throat> you uh, you kind of take a step back and you're like, oh, you know what? We're gonna put the hockey bag away in in April. You know and uh, we're not we're not going to play spring hockey, but then you hear about all your buddies are playing <clears throat> spring hockey and all your kids' yeah. peers are playing spring hockey. Like, oh my god, these guys—they're going to pass my kids. So then you're jumping on the ice and you're doing stuff. And I get it as a parent, even now with my young kids, you almost get anxious with it. And I'm I'm almost on the other side of it where I'm like, no, we're and there, there's opportunity obviously with what I do for a living or ools. You could get ice at the rink if you wanted to. You know, if your boys love hockey, you can get them on. But I'm almost on the other side where I'm like, no, like we're not even talking about it. If he wants to throw pucks around the basement or he wants to go outside in his rollerblades, no problem. Um, but let's just take a bit of a break. And, and we've, we've been asked this year a couple of times, like, Hey, you want to play spring hockey before all this happened with the, with the Corona and stuff. And it's like, no, I didn't even ask him. I'm like, no, uh, we're not playing. Like I'm not doing it. Yeah. Um, and I think it's up to the parents well, well, to take that stand a bit. Right. I think, I, it, I think it's really important. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree too. And it didn't mean we didn't play hockey for four months, like from April to August. But it, it meant maybe we like uh, roller hockey a little bit, yeah. or street hockey, or it didn't mean we didn't step on the ice at all for four straight months. But it, like, you don't have to be like in spring hockey, practice twice a week, and do this, and go have a private lessons on top of that. Like, there's 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 a happy medium and and everything in life, and I think. This is definitely one of them, right? For sure. No, yeah. I agree. And even, and when I was that age, I started playing, I didn't play, like I was older than most when I played a little bit of spring hockey. My parents were like, what do you want to do? You know, and I really wanted a, a golf membership. I, a bunch of buddies from our team, we all got, you know, junior golf memberships in the Kitchener Waterloo area and we all golfed together, but we all wanted to play. Like I wanted to play too or whatever. And they were like, well, we can do that. Like, it's important to show your kids too. Like, Hey, well, if you do this, you can't do this, or we can do, we can do so much of this. And, then that's when we can do a little bit of this. And I got to play in one tournament, like for a couple of years, like, like as I got a little bit older and it was a fun tournament, like in Collingwood. And I know it was probably now I look back, it was probably my, my dad, uh, subliminally trying to get me to play in it. Cause it was like all his buddies going and it was <laughs> probably a fun weekend for, yeah. for, yeah, exactly. It was probably a fun weekend for all, all the dads and, and moms I went, but, but we went to one tournament, you know, and that was it. And it kind of became like a little bit of a ritual. It was like a weekend away for all the kids and families and, you know, parents whatever and and i think so i take doing everything in moderation and just making sure it's not i mean you're seeing some of these kids are playing a full season tons of hockey exhibition games five tournaments or whatever they play in and then maybe like three four or five spring tournaments oh yeah that's not yeah it's crazy totally can't believe kenny would make you do something like that <laughs> yeah i actually i can't believe that you golfed since you were that young and you're still not that good at golf that's crazy <laughs> that's a great point <laughs> A great point. I play wrong-handed now with you guys just to make it fair. That's why. Well, thank you. I'm not even going to comment on that. My <laughs> golf game is absolutely disastrous. But, um, but it, it goes back to, to like, so, like you're happy that usually the hockey season comes in and it's provincial and we, of course you want to win. And, but I don't know. I, it was, I was like that. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm sad it's over, but I'm kind of happy it's over. Or like, all right, April comes around, like, all right, hockey season's over. I'm not even that mad. And I was excited for baseball season sure, to pick yeah. up in May for us, right? And same thing, yeah. like you go to provincials for baseball and then like barely touch the ice for two, three months. And like, oh, like I'm excited. Our hockey season's back and then I'll, I'll get going again. And like I was, I, I, I get the feeling like once once you play 12 months a year, it's, it's, it's nonstop, right? So there's no, not that excitement again coming back. And yeah, I agree. For so, sure. I don't know if it's a sex thing, any anything like the the guy players been motivated to, to play or not play or I don't know. It, yeah. It's just uh, it it is a, a touchy subject, and everybody has their own opinion about it. But a lot of ex- experts, and I'm not saying we are experts, but doctors and and strength and conditioning coaches are 
seems to have the same message about about the subject. So, yeah, yeah, no, totally. And I think like I think one thing too, going back to kind of your story through minor hockey and going to play junior, it's one of those things where a lot of kids get stuck in that ban a midget age, so that 13, 14, 15, and they're not sure what they're going to do. They're not, you know, they're 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 pretty good. They're getting better, but they're not really at the top of their game or the top of that triple a group or whatever and then they kind of like oh, maybe i'm like kind of like you did oh, maybe i'm just gonna go to college and then one opportunity comes out like i'll go to this camp or i'll go to this tryout or i'll do whatever and all of a sudden you make the team and i i'm for you was that kind of a bit of a turning point when you got what out of that basically out of that showcase or whatever it was you got a little bit of an opportunity and then from there i mean obviously those next two three years were big learning years for you not only on language because you learned a different language but just on i think hockey because you obviously got a lot better in those two, three years of playing junior in order to earn yourself a chance to play a little bit of college and then move it on to university hockey as well. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, just, it, it's getting, it's getting a chance, right? Like, especially being like in a remote community, a little bit like far away from big centers, just put uh, people in perspective, like they come with a five hour drive from Quebec city. Yeah. So there's no double A, there's no triple A. Like you, you got like the, what we were called were double B. And that, so we had like a couple of players that were like, if we would have lived in Quebec city, a couple, like maybe four or five of us would have played double A in Quebec city. But we also had a couple, maybe B players that were playing on our, it was our travel team, if you want. So it, it was a mixed bag of everything. And we, we did, we did pretty well with what we had. And it, there's not a lot of scouting happening and you're kind of like, you're the big dog in your, in your, in your team all the time, but it's, doesn't mean you're that good of a hockey player it's just because the yeah, caliber yeah. is not really there, right? Like, yeah. like I was always one of the top player on my team, but doesn't mean in the whole province of Quebec, like I was, I was nobody really. And just, but just getting the chance to, to, to move out and like, now I'm not knocking my small town by any means because of everything I basically knew about hockey. I learned it there and I had great coaches and, everything was fine and I'm not the only one that's come from a small community and kind of play junior or play yeah. or play university hockey, but it's just the reality of thing. You're not in Toronto, you're not in Montreal, you're not in big centers. So you just have to deal with it and you learn to, to, to play. And once you move, uh, you move to, to bigger things, if you will, uh, you just learn the ropes of the game, the junior hockey scene and how things are. And, and like you mentioned it about the language thing, that was the big thing for me was moving to BC and I, I, I couldn't speak a, a word of English, right? So I just moved. That was a, just a big learning curve for me. I was 17 years old. And the only thing I you knew, I knew right, is whatever the basic things you learn in, uh, in, in, in your English class, if I can translate that to uh, people in Ontario, is what you learn in your French class, right? So it's not, not you're not really, uh, yeah, not very much no, you're not really it. holding a big cut conversation, right? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I just go in there. The family was speaking English. Uh, my teammates were speaking English, and you live you live in, the, in an English city, so you just you pick it up. Just be, being immersed in it is the best win. Of everything that I could take away from those years is is, is that. But even if it doesn't sound like it right now, but um, <laughs> it, it right like I I I, I made the I made the most of it, and yes, hockey was great. I met a lot of good people, and I won games. I lost games. I won championship, lost championship. But then the big, the big picture of things is is that learning curve that was the the, the big seller for for me and mostly my parents sending me out there. And and the big selling point was, well, mom, I'm going to learn English. Even though it was probably not the first thing on my list, but oh, no, you're going to be now you're girls. looking back and yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, but it's it's just it's just life, and you get to living away from home to kind of teach you good life lessons, right? And 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 in the other sense too, it it allows you to kind of put to apply all the the the, the values that your parents are taught you growing up. Now you're all although you're living with a billet family, but you're kind of on your own and kind of. Um, learning a lot on your uh, by about yourself on okay, how, how I'm going to deal with this. Um, I was in Vancouver, so I'm pretty far away from Bay Como. Yeah, like, how am I going to deal with huge. that? And right. So, yeah. that, so to me, that was the big learning, the big life lessons was, was that part of junior hockey. Right? It's, 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 yes. The hockey, like it says, you learn, you become better hockey players and you become a, 
a better better person. It's a good point, though. I think like even when I went away and, and lived, and I was in Markham, so it was only two three hours away from home. But um, I had a like a nicer house in Markham. I had nicer cars than I had back home, like as my billet family. Uh, but you really learn to appreciate what you have at home, you know, no matter how good or bad mm-hmm. it is, you know. Uh, I was very fortunate to have a good home and a good upbringing. But, um, yeah, you definitely learn you, know, you learn a lot about yourself, like you said, but you, you mature a lot and, and you realize there's more to the world than what you lived in in your small town of Sudbury or Bay Como or Air. I'm sure, Kev, you went through the same thing when you went away to school and kind of branched out a little bit. You kind of appreciate what you had kind of when you leave it, you know? Yeah, it was, cr- it was crazy. I was obviously... Uh, like you, I was only a couple hours away, but, but I, I felt I was, uh, I was spoiled at home. You know, my, my parents kind of, we had everything we needed and my mom's a, a caretaker for sure. So I, I thought it was big just for growing up, getting away. I think it's really not, it's not, uh, it doesn't have to be done. Like there's lots of great hockey players that don't move away till they're older, but I think it's a really good experience for kids that eventually want to, want to get away and get on their own to move away into like a billet family. Cause I think it's like a, it's like a halfway house, you know, you, you should hopefully yeah. be on your own to like do some of your food and, and your laundry and cook some of your meals, stuff like that. And, um, hopefully you're doing that at your house anyway, but I, I think it's, it's, it's kind of like a halfway house, like I said, and it's a good, good learning experience for kids. I couldn't imagine going through what Uli went through with no. not knowing the language. Like when I went to Europe for the first time, you know, I was, I was a lot older. I, I'd already gone away and played junior, played, you know, gone to the States to play college and then went away and couldn't speak the language, but I was an adult and even that was hard. And I was, yeah. and I wasn't like, well, I was living in a house, you know, our coach spoke a bunch, but most of the guys on the team spoke English and our coach spoke, spoke a bunch of English. So it wasn't even crazy that way. Uh, it, it, that would have been, that would have been tough. Like it's impressive for a 17 year old to do that. No, but for it, sure, man. Definitely. And yeah. And now like being basically, you know, completely bilingual, obviously. And then, Kind of moving forward a little bit, so getting out of the kind of the junior, you get an opportunity to play a little bit of college. Was that something that was kind of on your radar? I know you're like looking at an NCAA scholarship, like most kids were, and maybe that was going to happen, wasn't going to happen, and then all of a sudden there's an opportunity for you. Was it more just let's just keep this train going, let's just keep trying to play as long as we can and keep pushing this cart up the hill as, as kind of as long as we can? Absolutely, it is great. I barely even knew about that league in, in Alberta, the ACAC. For, I know those people know that there's like uh, Faith and Nate, and I was playing in Augustana. There's like Mount Was Lethbridge Ryle, in there too? It. No, Lethbridge in the CIS. They are, right? Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. But Mount Royal is in the CIS now, but they used to be in yeah, my okay. league. In, in my league, not my league, but in that yeah. league. Um, so, but yeah, and a couple, uh, a couple of teammates for for my last year of junior in the AJHL, they kind of same thing. They were looking for maybe NCAA, and that didn't happen. And a bunch of guys they just say hey, we're going to to Augustana. So I'm like, I contacted the coach and was like, well, like if there's a spot for me, I'd like to, like you said, keep that train going. Hopefully, we can, yeah. uh, I can keep playing, go to school now, and and. Yeah, so it wasn't really in the plan, but then I had an actual, it was a great year. It was in Camrose, Alberta, just east of Edmonton. Okay. And they have a great, they have a great junior, uh, junior team, the Camrose Kodiak. Mm-hmm. And they used to go to the Royal Bank Cup all the time. They were really, really strong back when I played uh, in the AJHL. And uh, so the, the Augustana College is attached to to the rink uh, in, the, in, uh, in Camrose and we had a great season. We had a great bunch of guys. Um, so it was a great transition to, for me to, um, go from junior and then that playing in that college league before I made my move to, uh, to CIS. Um, mm-hmm. like I said, I had a real good season personally. Uh, I was playing a lot of minutes. So it was the caliber is a little bit lower than the CIS, but I kind of really gave was my diving board to, 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 to get noticed from, uh, uh, U sports or CIS schools. And, we we used to to host a tournament in between the the Christmas break. It was called the Viking Cup, and yeah. that my my team my team was the Augustana Vikings, and we used to, to host that team. And the um, the U eighteen teams from all around the world when they used to, to kind of it was a preseason oh, tournament okay, cool. for their big tournament. Yeah, yeah. And um, there was a junior uh, jun- junior uh, division for the tournament and a university division. 
So we used to do a couple pre pre or pre tournament games against the under eighteen or under seventeen. I can't even remember. Yeah. So obviously the kids are the kids were a lot younger than we were because we're a college kid, uh, but they're a lot more skilled than we were. So the, the games were pretty good, and in the preseason, and then the, the AJHL would have a North All Star team and a South All Star team and play these teams. And we were like the the my Augustana team. We that year we had uh, University of Lethbridge coming, and Guelph was there in the University Division. Oh, okay, so they were playing. Yeah, and then we ended up uh, as a college team. We ended up losing to Guelph in uh, in the final of the tournament um, in double overtime. So that kind of showed how like the ACAC league was pretty. I would say as good as CIS because it wasn't the case, but just at least we had a couple, a few guys that could at least match up right to the U Sport uh, caliber. And this, so can and, U Sport uh, scout out of that AC like they could. Like for you going from there to Western, did you lose a year of eligibility or was this straight transfer? No, no problem. No, like, that no straight tra- transfer, and okay. I think that's because that was considered college league versus yeah. university. But it was still a pretty good caliber, and I just had a great tournament. And I think the Western scout from Alt West, Doug Hodge, was at the tournament, and Hodge. I, yeah, Hodge. As as a defenseman, I led. You're talking about pumping, pumping my own tires. Yeah, yeah so pump them, pump right away, because we can't find yeah, stats so. back in the seventies. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> no, I, I just led, I, led, I just led the tournament in scoring, and I just 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 a good two weeks, right? It's just bl- blind squirrel finds the nuts once in a while, right? So, <laughs> he found a lot that weekend. Uh, oh yeah, so uh, no, but it was just kind of like said it was a diving board. But that's for, how it happens, though, right? For, yeah, for kids out there, mm-hmm. though. You have one good weekend or one good game or two good games in a row and a scout happens to see you, man, this kid's got something. And one thing I know and kind of, we're going to get into Western here in a sec, but I got to know you and first met you at Western. I was actually just came back from playing and I was coaching with Clark Singer there and you were on the team. And um, if there's one thing that, you know, I know about you as a player is, you know, you're definitely a guy who is a battler. Like if you're going into a game seven, with a team and it's going to get mucky and dirty. Like you want Uli on your team. Cause he's going to go stand in front of the net in the power <laughs> play. He's going to probably draw a couple penalties. He'll have a couple guys not liking him. block. He'll block shots. Like, so for you in a tournament like that, where you're probably playing a little bit for those golf teams, if not, you know, trying to maybe get a spot there, trying to, you know, promote yourself a little bit and showcase yourself. Uh, it would have been a perfect yeah. opportunity for you to do that. And obviously you did and, and, and good things came of it. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like the, um, the, the Guelph coach was, like met with a bunch of us after the tournament and kind of just given us his business card. So he's like, we'll, we'll be back in the playoffs to recruit. And, and, and that year, the, the U sport, uh, national tournament championship was in Edmonton, oh, which cool. was 40 minutes from, from Camrose. So, um, like I met that week, we met like a bunch of my teammates and, uh, and me, like we met probably four or five different schools from the OUAs. Like Lakehead was, we had, we went for lunch with a bunch of teams that That's were all cool. at the tournaments and McGill and uh, Western didn't make it that year, but Clark was in Edmonton and I got to go sit down with them and it just came down to make a decision between which school. But like you said, it was just a good, uh, a good chance for, for us to shine and kind of prove ourselves. And because most of us wanted to kind of use that, that college year to, 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 to showcase ourselves and and hopefully get get on with a, a U Sport team. And not sure if you remember this or not, but how many guys off that team roughly got a chance to move on? Like let's say one or two, five or six. Was there other from, players from my team? Yeah, at, like from that age, like you're, you're, yeah, your boys there, like the guys you play uh, with. Quickly, I know. Oh, Jeff Martin. Remember mm-hmm. Jeff? Yeah, yeah. Jeff was on my team at Augustana, so he came. With, yeah. And I, uh, two other teammates went to Lakehead, and I know for sure two other guys went to University of Calgary. So it's pretty right, cool, though, right? Like six guys, yeah. Five, six guys, yeah. 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 And maybe and more, I think but yeah. maybe one or two more guys, yeah. Yeah. So, no, it's awesome. I think that shows, though, that there's like different paths you can take. Like, and I was like you, Wills. I played double B. Like, I played triple A for a little bit and then played in a yeah. small, you know, we had a thousand people in our town. and and played in a small town and you know what I mean? Played a little bit of junior B and, and whatever, but, and then, you know, but for you to go, to go out there to move a, a long way and then play at, you know, college, whatever you want to call it, prep college, mm-hmm. whatever. And it's pretty neat to see those different stories. And yeah, none of us 
ended up make playing in the NHL, but that, I don't know that that was, you know, obviously we always wanted to do that as a kid, but we got to play a lot of hockey over some of some guys that, you know, maybe were in our areas that got drafted over us or were better than us, you know, and Bantam and Midget or whatever, and, and just took a little a bit of a different road and got, got a lot of fun years by, by just kind of exploring different opportunities. Well, I think that's one of the well, big things, man. Like we all extended hockey for a good five, seven, eight more yeah. years, got some schooling paid out of it. We all got degrees out of it and we all took different paths to get to where we, where we were, right. We're all from different areas, you know, of Ontario, Quebec. And, you know, yeah. we all ended up play, basically playing a bit of pro as well and seeing a little bit of the world. So, I mean, yeah, you never know when that opportunity is going to come. And obviously for, you know, for all of us, I think it was just kind of, you know, playing well at the right time. People saw you being consistent, you know, working hard, all those kind of things we always talk about. But um, yeah. yeah, it's one of those, it's one of those things where don't give up on, 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 on your dream. If you love it, you want to put the work in and you know, you want to keep going at it. There's opportunity. And I mean, even that, even the league you're talking about, like the ACAC, I don't think a lot of you even know about opportunities like that to, to almost have that bridge between junior and uh, youth sport. You know what I mean? There's that little bit of a bridge there that is something that people can seek out as well, you know? Yeah. Uh, and we all end up playing in the same team in the Sunday league at Thompson yeah, we Arena. Yeah, tear it up on Sundays right now in, in <laughs> That's uh, right. our beer league team. It's amazing. It's but awesome. It, it, it is, it is kind of, like I think you grew up to, to a point pretty early in your career, you, you know you're not making it to the NHL, right? Like, most guys, like, we're not oblivious to the, the fact that, all right, that's pretty 15, you do, you weren't going. Like, and it's not the case for everyone. Like, there's players, 15 year old, yeah, yeah. They, yeah they, they have a great year. They know they're going to be high draft pick in the OHL or just CHL. And, and I'm not talking to these, like, really, really high elite athletes, but for the most average junior guys, we know we're not going to the NHL. So, uh, what do you want to make? out of hockey like Dwayne said that you're talking about getting our school and school paid for right like it, or play as long as you can and just a, a funny story well, it's not funny but it's just a story that that came came to mind and it happened last weekend and one of my one of my uh, students at school is a junior player here in town and he, he got he, he called me and he's like well I just got accepted to university here in Ontario but I kind of want to play hockey and he's not really like usually you sports like you get to play you sport at in hockey you get to play when you're 21 when you're done you're junior yeah but he just started playing junior and now he wants to know like patty what do i do like i want to go to school and and but i still want to play hockey and i'm not too sure what i want to do so what like he's kind of asking for advice and, and now i don't want to send the wrong message to anyone because i'm a school teacher uh, after all but school will always be there Right, like it, you can start university at eighteen, you can start university at twenty, twenty. Like you can, but your hockey years are pretty limited. So, as long as like, and again, I, I don't want to send the wrong message. Oh, I think that message is good, man. I think, I think it's really mm -hmm. good. Yeah, right. Like it, it uh, and whether it's university, college, or like a trade, like it doesn't really matter what path you take. Same with hockey. Like if you have a, a, a career, like a goal with like goals, what you want to do in life, it doesn't really matter what what type of schooling you're you're getting. But think about your hockey years. Like I said, they're pretty limited. Like we got to play until like I, I was in Europe when I was twenty six or twenty seven, and that was it. Right, like we played a couple of years senior hockey, but right, like it's, it's not the same thing. But so to go back to my story is like think carefully what, what what you want to do because if you want to stop and again this kid he, he's great he's got a good head and he, he knows what 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 to do with the schooling and stuff and he knows he's not going to the nhl as well like he, he's pretty he's pretty cerebral and he, he understands what's going on but hey, can you go play dchl can you go and keep the thing and the wheel and the train going and because i told i told him like if you kind of stop when you're 18 it's pretty much done after that right yeah. like it's so, but if you get accepted in school when you're 18, at right, university level, I'm talking about, like if you get accepted, there's a good chance you're when you're 20 or 21, you'll still be accepted, right? So, it, it, it's pros and cons. What you really want to do about, like, but I, I you know what the rules three like, years from now. I right? think I think the vice game is is bang on, and I think I'm fortunate. I, I'm sure your parents, Wolves, and, and Kevin, your parents are the same. 
Um, I, I, we didn't have a timeline in my family where you had to finish high school, go to college or university, get a degree, get a job, make sure that job had a pension, get a mortgage, get married. Like there was nothing like that. It was go travel, go live, like get your high school. Obviously we'd love to, for you to get a degree in university or college or get a trade, but there was never a timeline. So I never felt that pressure. And my advice, to a lot of kids now is exactly what you told them was like, don't feel like this is a family decision. So I'm going to tell you my advice, but you talk to your family about it. But you shouldn't feel like there's a, I mean, at 18 years old to go to university, graduate at 21, 22, and then what, get a job at TD Bank and, and get a mortgage? Like, that sucks. If you can play hockey for another four or five years or you can travel or do other things and, and like you said, go back to school at 21 or, or at 19, you know, but live your life and enjoy it. I think sometimes, especially if it's a good kid with a head on their shoulders, if it's a kid who just wants to go live on the beach in France for a year and, and you know, sell knickknacks on the beach, Okay, that's maybe a little bit different, but you got a kid with a good head on his shoulders who wants to, you know, try to pursue things. I mean, I don't feel like there should be a timeline on it. I think it should be enjoy life and, and make sure you do them, you know, making responsible decisions. But man, if I, I 100% agree with you. If you want to pursue hockey, I mean, yeah, your timeline's so small to pick it back up at 20, 21 yeah. when you're done and say, hey, I'm going to really try to go play senior, go try to play pro. There's hard, yeah. really, really hard. And I think what you said about it being a family decision is important because it is. It's like kids deciding, hey, do I get take that, you know, the, the high-end kids, do I go to the O or do I go NCAA? Yeah. You know, well, it's different for everybody. It depends. What kind of player are you? You know, how how mature are you? So, you know, all, all kinds of different things. So just like that, like, are you, are you going to be able to, because it is hard to not, like, when you get out of high school, it's hard to be out of school for a little bit. And I did it like you. I, I, I was done, done high school and I was two or three years out. Uh, before I, I went to university and and played again and uh, it, it, you got to be a right like the right type of kid because it's hard to get out of the classroom setting and then take time off and just jump back into it again it is but if you can do it take advantage of it it's like it's like let's say you're uh, like rules was you know 26 27 a lot of people and I was I was I was done over there a year or two before rules but a lot of people be like whoa you're you know you're 25 you should really should really be settling down with, uh, you know, your, your girlfriend and, and looking at marriage and kids. Like, what do you mean? Like, I don't, why? Just cause you did it at 25. Like yeah. I, you know what I mean? Like play until you want to, you don't want to play anymore until you don't, you don't love it. Or until your body doesn't do it or until you just don't want to. And cause you can meet someone and settle down, but everybody's different and, you, and there's no, no set time or, or guideline on when you have to, when you have to do things. Yeah. No, I, I, other, I um, other than what it was said about junior being done, <laughs> like when you're when you're 20, you're done. So yeah, you, you use that time when you can. Yeah, yeah. So like, did those two years of you not playing hockey and going to school right away? Did that change anything in your in your life path? Right, like I mean, exactly. It, and again, and you, I think Dwayne, you said it the best. It's a family decision, but you can't have those years back and we all know, and we all wish we had those years back if we could now. Yeah, that I wish I had last year back. Brief. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it is just like I said earlier, and you talking about work, Kevin, like, like work will be there when you're 35, 45, 55, right? Like it's, it's, yeah. But you're young, just, you're just not, work, not so much work, right now. Will be there today, <laughs> yeah. But when you're 35, yeah, 45. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, we, we're, not, we're not sure about, yeah, you're right. We don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> Te- technically, it should be there, yeah. But, uh, as long yeah, as we right. have internet, we got something to do anyway, right? We can just keep meeting on the uh, on the podcast, be perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, but moving forward now, into like coming to Western, obviously, pretty big school, big reputation as far as being a you know, pretty good program with Clark Singer being there for a long time. And, um, and obviously, you know, a good reputation of, of being winning, of a winning team. You were there for four years, just kind of run through real quickly. Like I know that there was a couple good, well, a couple, you know, runs at the national championship, a couple good runs that way for you. Um, what was the whole experience like at Western? First of all, anybody who's not from London, Ontario thinks of Western thinks blonde hair, good bodies girls everywhere like it's 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 crazy though it is a good looking campus guys girls there's a lot of people there um you know there's it's pretty fun for i think people coming here and and obviously athletes coming here it's a pretty cool vibe it's a pretty cool area but what was it like for you what were kind of your experiences well it was and again those four years went by really quickly i wish i could get those four years back because they were they were amazing they were great and as much as junior hockey, a lot of fun, 
but now you're you're young men, right? Like twenty five to twenty five young men on the same team, but you 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 live on your own. There's no family. Like you're 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 let loose into the wild, basically. Right? So you're like we talked about it earlier. You're 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 learning to become an adult to be to to manage a lot of things. So the first year is often a disaster for <laughs> a lot of a lot of student <laughs> student student athletes. Well, for sure. So. Uh, so uh, I think I did all right on the ice that first year, but uh, in the classroom, it wasn't it wasn't my my best year of, <laughs> of record for sure. Um, no, but then, like I said, you just learn to to, to, to manage everything. School, um, well, hockey. Obviously, you're, we're kind of in we're 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 used to it because we play, we played junior hockey for three four years. So the hockey part is one thing, and usually is the main focus. But now when you get here. It's and Clark Singer is really good about that. Is that you're, you're a student athlete, and it's really important to understand that um, Western is a fun uh, school, but it's already it's also a really really good school. So uh, going through cl- like going to classes and having good, like your marks up and and um, so it's just managing everything. The first year, like I said, is whoa. It, it, you kind of wake up in the second semester is like. All right, I gotta get my stuff together here and get my acts together because yeah. you party and you, right? And, and um, the little things that seem pretty innocuous now, but it's like for the first time in your life, really, you're okay, I gotta go buy groceries, right? I get those, that's the little stuff that usually mom takes care of it or your family, your adult family takes care of it, but all right, I gotta cook dinner tonight and. Like you're your student athlete, so you're trying to eat crap dinner every, like five nights a week, all the week <laughs> yeah. sometimes. But like it, it's details that you don't, you just come in saying, hey, I'm a hockey player, I'll play hockey, no big deal. But those little details, they take a toll on you in the first probably year or first semester at least where you're, all right, I got I got to focus and organize my stuff and make sure I, and often enough, now I talk on, uh, I talk as a coach and seems like, how come that kid was really, really good in the OHL? And then he comes here and it doesn't translate. And then he's like, well, he, doesn't, he didn't lose a skill, right? Like, he, he was good. Yeah, he he's was still a good player. Yeah. It, yeah, he's still a good player, but something's not clicking. But that sometimes it's just the, the, whole, the whole package is, like, fun, but it's maybe sometimes too much. It's right? not even that, man. So, I think going from junior, even from, like, where you played – um, going to college and then going to university, coming from the OHL, like you think of how much time these guys have on their hands. If you're a OA in the O, so at 20 years old, you got all morning, you go in for breakfast club, you go to breakfast, then you go for lunch and you go to practice and you're have the whole night where man, you go to university, you've got two or three classes during the day. You got to run a practice, get a workout in, you know, do your homework, yeah. like your schedule. I don't know, Kev, you remember too, like it was so, I remember being like, what is yeah. going on, man? Like, yeah. Like, the first semester, to your point, was like hockey aside. Who cares about hockey? Just trying to figure out how to get from one class to the next to get lunch, to get groceries, to get. I mean, it's it's a grind for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, right. but we like. Uh, go ahead, Kev. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think the schedules, the schedules, I think by far the hardest thing when you get to college. And and I think you know going back to just to what we were talking about about players preparing is huge like even in junior for if you're helping a player out being like and i had somebody helping me out and, and i was lucky enough to be playing junior uh and there was a college there that didn't have a hockey team so there was you know there's kind of loopholes in terms of transferring in and i took a couple of just random classes and it kept me like up getting out of bed in the morning and still got to have a ton of fun but i was really really glad when i got to university that i did that but so if you can do little things to like help yourself prepare Meant physically, obviously, as hockey players are always doing that, but mentally, so that when you get there, it's not too overbearing. I think it can go a long way for exactly what you said, Will's about not being overwhelmed in that first that first semester where you get yourself maybe so far behind that you're you're either like climbing uphill for another year or, or two to just get back to where you were, or worse, you're you know flunking out or you you can't get it together on the ice because your off ice habits mm-hmm. are so bad, whatever it is. But it's important to manage that stuff. Oh, for sure, man. So, Wills, give me your top. Give me your top two memories of being at Western for those four years. Like, was there anything that kind of <laughs> popped off to you that you're like, could be on ice, could be off ice, but like winning, uh, going or you know winning the league type thing, or 
anything that was uh, graduating, anything like that that kind of comes to mind that's like so, good memories of, of being there and being with the boys and kind of your experience cool. there. So when we started the podcast, he said I was too quick in my telling my my how where I came from and where I played. And now my four years at Western, you want me to sum it up in two <laughs> stories? <laughs> no, you can go longer. I just want to hear like what do you because people like a lot of people that don't know Western. It's got it's got a lot of history there. It's got a it's a it's you know and you you know better than anybody right now. I know just because I was behind the scenes like. You know, behind the scenes at Western, it's it's a small, older rink. You know, it's uh, not the best locker room in the in in U Sports. Um, but man, there's always good players that come through there. They always, you know, and we're gonna get into your season this year, which was unbelievable. But you always find a way to win. You know, and uh, maybe maybe not every year, but you know, every second, third year, your guys are competitive. You're in it. Um, so for people that don't know, like you know, just it's it's a family, man. And now the alumni is getting more involved. It's it's a good it's a good spot, you know. So as far as yeah, just kind of like highlights for you of, of stuff that kind of went on there that you're like, man, this is you know, I'll never forget that. Well, like my first year, like I'll I'll I won't drag all the stories, but I'll kind of mention a couple like focal points, I guess. Is my first year we got to go play uh, in Alaska, so Clark Clark had us signed up to play Anchorage and uh, Fairbanks. Right? So just no not a lot of people got to go to Alaska. Sick so we trip, just yeah. flew flew out to Detroit, like quick uh, layover in Minnesota and then up for five or six days and we got to to, to like we we were there for six days but we only played two games. So we they took us on a glacier tour, like a bunch of stuff like that. Like one to uh hot springs and we got to see a lot of stuff that we got. Like, not everybody takes a vacation to go to Alaska. So I, I, I thought it was pretty cool. That's unreal. That was my first year. So that was, that was pretty great. Um, on the ice that year, I thought we had a pretty good roster. and But we ended up playing uh, in the playoffs, and our top three centers were, were injured. So Ryan Harris were the people that were around back in, the, in, in those years. Like, Ryan Harris played to the night was our captain didn't play in the playoffs that year That's right. um jesse boucher was heard to and uh copy warchuk a london native where played in every sport possible in the city <laughs> uh, he, he, he played with a broken wrist so not looking for excuses but uh, hockey is the game that it is and he lost in three games to waterloo in the second round so who knows if you have those three guys out I'll see maybe maybe we move on and we go to nationals right so that was kind of kind of it for the first first season and second season we had um we we had, we fundraised a lot of money to per the season before that and we had a, a trip booked to uh to germany in in during the christmas break so uh again don't want to get too too in too much details because How i might get in trouble but that, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Like, it was, uh, we ran and played, I think, five games over 12 day span. Uh, we spent, uh, New Year's in Berlin. Like, and again, everybody, everybody get... made it home. No one got arrested. Yeah. Nobody got arrested. <laughs> and I'm just Who glad. Who did you that, play? Oh, uh, we played a bunch. I think we played, I might be wrong on that, but I think we played three Division Four teams. And two division three teams in uh, in in Germany. So the division four games weren't not fun for anyone. Um, the first game we played after the first period, I think we were up six or seven nothing. And the ref and the ref came to, to Clark and was like, "No more, bo- no more body check. <laughs> you guys are done." It's like it's like if you guys if you guys hit someone, it's going to be two two minute roughing every time. <laughs> <laughs> It was just a mismatch. So, uh, and how dra- sick is that and, if you got to play that hungover? You don't even have to hit. You don't have to try hard. It's amazing. And, and, <laughs> and, and we got to dress everybody. So we had like eight defensemen, <laughs> like 15 forwards. No way. We played. There's, uh, there's, there's no power play. There's no nothing. Yeah. So it's just fine. Like open the door, like minor hockey. Oh, who's the next two to go on the ice? And you just step on the ice. And guys are racing off. Fun. Guys like, are racing off after shifts, trying to get next in line. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get off. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but it was fun because we got to, to, to meet the players after that. And like the, the, from the other team. And there's always a banquet after each game. So we would go and the, first of all, they would drop like it's Europe. So they don't 
Greek give it anything about drinking alcohol. So they would just literally drop two cases of beer in the dressing room after every game. Amazing. And then we'd just go up for dinner with the other team. You just get to, to see different a different side of hockey, right? Yeah. Like being in Europe, like sure. talking to they they thought we were like Canadian hockey players, right? They, they all thought we were like NHL guys at first and like they saw okay, you're not that good, even though you're you're beating us pretty badly. <laughs> yeah. They kinda of realized. But literally we would show up at, at arenas in middle of nowhere in Germany. Like we're not talking Berlin or Munich, I'm talking like small town. And play the games at seven, show up for like pregame warm up and stuff at like five. There's like honestly probably 200 people waiting for us to show up at the arena. Really? Uh, yeah, with like hockey cards from the OHL. Like, wow. That's for cool. us to find, like, not for me because I didn't play, so they didn't have a card of Patty. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, my, but my roommate was like, Patty's like, I have no idea where you got that hockey card. I've never seen that hockey card before. <laughs> That's cool. And guys, like, it was it was pretty cool. It was just a great experience, and like being with twenty five of your buddies overseas, just having a great time. So that was definitely one of the highlights of of my four years here. So it was really really cool. That is cool, man. That's really cool. And what about some of the runs you guys had? As far as like, what was the best run you guys had in your in in your time at Western? Yeah, well, um, I think the probably the the best well the in the history of Western, I think the, the 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 best game they played, I'm assuming, is the two, 2002 national championship that they won yeah. in triple overtime. So I'm assuming, in at least in Clark's in, in Clark's uh, tenure here, like I'm assuming, winning that game was pretty pretty amazing and winning being the national champ. Um, but I I I'd like to think that I was probably part of the second most exciting game in in Western history was my. Uh, when we went to national, my pump, third year. Pump them, pump them oh yeah, <laughs> no, it, was, it wasn't. Even, that was a it was a team effort. It wasn't just me. It was okay. A team effort. Okay. Um. So the format to the, the 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 championship was different than now. Now it's a it's eighteen single knockout. But back then it was only six teams, and it was two pools of three teams. And so it was Ron Robin, and both uh, pool champions or winners would make it to the final. So we had, we played our first game of the tournament. And we lose to Miguel by one goal. And then the next day we have to play St. Mary, but they already beat Miguel 4-1. So with all the, the goal differentials and this and that, uh, we start the game. We have to move on. We have to beat them by three goals. I which remember is this. This is sick, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. keep going. You're, 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 you're a national championship. Like You're happy to win 2-1 and run it, run away with the win. And all right, we, could, like, we got it, right? Like it's, it's not like, oh, we're going to beat these guys by five goals and it's going to be an easy game. There's no such thing. So, um, where Clark and Pat Powers was the assistant coach back then, too, and there's like kind of pre scouting St. Mary's and guys, let's play our game. Let's just see what happens. And like, let's make sure we're, we're up by a goal with 10 minutes left and uh, hopefully we can pull the goalie and pull some magic. It was literally like the pregame talk. Like, you know, let's just win the game. And if we don't move on, let's, we don't move on. But, like, Let's play a good game in Bahamas. So, kind of, let's win every period. We win every period. We beat, beat them by three goals. Sure enough, that didn't happen. We're tied 2 2 after two periods. <laughs> so, basically, we're still down by two goals. That's what it means, right? Because we have to beat them by three. And we started the third period. And first, a couple, first or second shift of the period, boom, we score a goal. 3 2. All right, we still have a chance. We're, we might win the game, but we might, we might not move on. So, Period keep going, and then three, four shifts later, boom, scores a second goal. So we're up four two. But again, we're we're still basically trailing by one. If you if you yeah. you take all the the plus minus out of it, and so we're like keep playing, keep playing. And then we got a power play, and then not even ten seconds in the power play, boom, another penalty. We got a five on three. So all right, we got this, we got this, and then sure enough, power play moves the puck around, boom, 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 shot on net, rebound, score, five two. Right, there's maybe 10 minutes left in the third period, but we're still, right, we're, we're up 5-2, but if they score a goal, we're, we're losing, right? So we, we're, we're not moving on, sorry, we're not moving on. If they score, yeah. they make it 5-3, we win the game, but we're not moving to the national final. And sure enough, boom, another goal, we're up 6-2, and then finally score an empty netter, and we won the game 7-2. Remember that. Which, 
Sick. Which we would play that That's game a hundred times. We would play that game a hundred times. That would never happen, yeah. right? It was just when it's meant to be, it's meant to be, and that kind of was kind of a, a miracle game. That was our, our miracle on ice, if you want. It was <laughs> yeah. pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. And then, and then did we, you guys meet up with UNB that year in the finals? Yeah, we ended up playing UNB, and they beat us four uh, two empty netter. It was a good game. So it was pretty good yeah. game. Their goalie was yeah. really good. I had yeah. I coached them actually in St. John, New Brunswick. Um, can't think of his name right now, but he was a solid, solid attendee. Uh, yeah, I know. I Fullerton. Yeah, Is it Fullerton? Fullerton. Yeah, Fullerton. Yeah, yeah. he was yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but it, it was a great year. It was like a goal away from uh, from being national champs. So right? we were tied two two in the third at some point, and uh, um, again, pumped my own tire, scored in that game. But uh, to no to no avail, to no avail, to no avail. But uh, was it a, was it yeah, a rebound? So, was it a rebound off a tip net front off your ass or what? I I don't think the fuck touched my stick. <laughs> <laughs> but your no, hands are up in the air like you. a dead eh? Yeah, oh, yeah silly. <laughs> Probably not the number. Yeah, it's all, it's all about it's all about being in the right spot. Yeah, exactly. Now I want to kind of yeah. go. I want to go through th- this year, kind of what happened. And I know you've been coaching there for a couple of years now. And I mean, we could do a whole other episode on on kind of your junior and 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 all how much you've been involved in minor hockey here for the last bunch of years. But you've been coaching Western for the past for the past three four years now. How many is it? Three or four? I just finished the third season. Yeah, third season. So. Yeah. Obviously had some good teams and some, you know, some, some, I mean, even last year, a real good run at the end of the year to, to, to win out basically. And then, and then, you know, clinch playoff spot and push a little bit in the playoffs. But this year, especially had some injury trouble, you know, guys go down, things happen. It's hockey. You guys are kind of limp into playoffs. So kind of, you know, catch one of the last spots or last couple spots in the playoffs, start off playoffs as an eighth seed. And then, um, kind of go through just quickly the first couple rounds and how that happened. I mean, you know, just. I mean, it was a pretty cool run that you guys had to get yourselves to the nationals again this year, and we'll get into what happened, unfortunately. But, um, but yeah, like you know, the group of guys you had this year, what happened to, you know, as a coach, how do they kind of peak at the right time where, you know, you kind of had a so-so year, win a couple, lose a couple, win one, lose two, win two, lose one, uh, back and forth, and then, you know, then you get a chance to play in the playoffs, and all of a sudden, man, here we go, we got a bit of a team here. Yeah, well. Uh, it's still it's pretty tough to, to explain why and how the guys turned it on. And I think it's, it has to do a lot with our goaltending. I think for people that follow our team a little bit, like Luke Parasini is a pretty outstanding young man and a really good goaltender. And for whatever reason, I, and I, by no means am I blaming the, the, the eighth spot in the, in the rear season on him by, hey, pull, by pull your means, screen down a little bit. I want to see your whole face. You're so good looking. And I just don't want to see your mustache in your eyes. There you go. <laughs> All good now? <laughs> yeah, All good now. You. So good Can looking. you hear me now? Hey, just yeah. real quickly before you get into your goalies, did it have anything to do with the skill development provided this year to your team? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know when uh, when the skill coach stopped coming in February, they kind of picked it up. <laughs> That's yeah. when the season turned around. I love it. I love it. Uh, no, sorry, yeah. no, but I mean, obviously, but, goaltending is huge, man. And you're right. Like, you know, your goal yeah. is kind of turn it on at the right time. Sorry, sorry, continue. I mean, to cut you off. And and and, and we know we know like pairs pairs is such a, an important part of this team. And for whatever reason, and during the season, not always. Uh, our best players, like I think he, he he's a best player on that on that team, and and there's a, the old cliche of when your best players aren't your best player, you don't win hockey games, and especially in in CIS hockey, you sport is everybody beats anybody. Yeah. Like we have, there's a couple teams that have great season, we lose three four games, but it's, when you look at the the scores after the after the night's over, it's rarely like more than one goal game or like maybe a team pulled their goalie out and it's empty netter and so so tight and um like system wise everybody's so 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 similar and everybody knows each other and it, it, it really really comes down to to hard work and i know again it's, it's a big it's a big cliche but it, in junior you, you got the overager where like they, if you turn it on they, they, they dominate right but here it's it's really more like a, a team game and and goaltending is a, is a, is a big thing, and I, and I think the big difference between the regular season and the playoffs was was uh, was a team effort. Like I think the team effort was better and more consistent, but goaltending was was a huge part of it. Yeah. Um. So those first two series, obviously teams playing better, goalies are on. 
Our pairs on on point, uh, playing well. But you basically kind of seesaw the first two games, lose one or win one, lose one, and then back on the road. Yeah. Basically, won both of those road games on the in the first series, correct? Yeah, and then yeah. So it's in in U Sports the, the the playoffs is not like it's a best of seven, it's best of three. Yeah. So which makes it tight, quick. man. That's so quick. Well, you lose the first game, you're in yeah. trouble right away, right? Yeah. Like there's no like the, the the margin for error is really really slim, and uh, and first game we started in Toronto, which Toronto had a, a terrific season. They I think they only lost three regular season games, and they really turned our program around, and they had a really really strong team. They a good system. Like I just talked about that. All all teams buy into their programs. They they, they were the team that with the most goals for in our conference. And the least uh, goals against, so really, really well-rounded team. Well coached, and, uh, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. The, their coach guy was the CIS coach of the year. Yeah. So, um, yeah, for sure. And uh, and we we get we get there and uh, we lose six two. They score two empty netters, but we we weren't really in it. And uh, and we just came back. And <laughs> that's kind of kind of funny story through our playoff run this year because the one the women's season wasn't over when we we played our first uh, playoff series the girls had uh, the women had two two games scheduled Friday and Saturday night at 7 p.m. that's usually when we play and we're like well okay we were stuck and we got playing Saturday at three and so for whatever reason it clicked and then I'll, I'll move on with that story but you'll see how i'm gonna link that later so we we got we played home and then we beat them and we, we went to toronto for game three on sunday night and uh really really tight game luke's making great plays guys are blocking shots on the pk like pretty good effort it, it was really like almost uh like a, a final a final game like it was really yeah. like it was intense and clark said after the game actually it was like there's some games at national that didn't have that intensity yeah. It was re really, and it was zero zero after two, and then we scored with maybe ten minutes left in the game to make it one nothing, and then off a turnover we got a two on one, and we made it two nothing right away, and then they started coming and coming, coming. The guys were on the heel, their heels big time, and Luke made a lot of good saves, and then they got a goal disallowed, and you, you could feel the tide shifting, and we somehow we held off, and then they scored one goal to make it two one, and we scored an empty netter to kind of run away with the. With the series win and uh, to move on to play number two Ryerson after that. And so that's kind an of eight seed, like an eight seed knocking off a number one, and then an eight seed going up against number two. Um, number two and and uh, Ryerson is really different in Toronto. Ryerson's been like that, uh, like power, uh, like often offensively very, very, very strong, scoring a lot of goals year after year. They had a, a bunch of guys that played in the AHL and the, the East Coast before they came back to school. So they're really, really uh, high octane. High octane and, and not uh, a lot of money. A little bit of both, but I mean, <laughs> with, with, well, with money, with money, you get good players and hundred percent. Yeah, so it's part of the part of the deal. And no, oh, but it help, you, helps. Helps both. Like helps bolster a bit of a better roster, obviously, which makes which is fine. It's I'm not saying it's bad or, or anything like that, but. Yeah. Um, you know, when it comes down to playoffs, so a lot of times maybe that money doesn't doesn't bode right. Like it depends on who shows no, up, how hard sure. guys play, and yeah. stuff, right? So, so, you going, so you guys going to Ryerson, and then and again, and Ryerson, I think four or five one in game one in Ryerson, and we're we're driving back on the bus after, and then Clark kind of asking the captains like, hey, when when do you guys want to play? Because throughout the week at practices, guys were like, well, we kind of like playing at three at Saturday. And, so sure enough, we we asked like everyone was at on campus, like whoever the, the event managers and stuff, like we want to play Saturday at three. So we're like, all right, but then it's got it's got to become like even on social media, we have like hashtag Saturday at three. It yeah, just, cool. beca- just became kind of a thing, and it, it it we got we got good crowds because of it. I think because family like Dwayne, you guys came with the kids and yeah. like Dave and like our Jamie and our friends. Yeah, right? It is a good. It is There's actually. A lot. For a lot of teams, man, at two o'clock or three o'clock on a Saturday or Sunday is way better, man. You're done by dinner time. You get yeah. home, still get the kids down. It's yeah, exactly. It's cool. So, so uh, all three games that we played at home were, I wouldn't say packed, but there's a lot of crowds there, yeah. so a lot of fans. So it, it makes it fun for the boys to play and to have a, a decent crowd. And anyway, so we end up being Ryerson at home, and uh, we went there, 
in game three again. So kind of the same path pattern that we played in round one. And uh, we ended up uh, scoring with two minutes left in the game to tie it 2-2. And then we went to double overtime. If I'm, no, that was first overtime. Yeah. Anyway, so we beat them in overtime and we had a, we had a good game. And again, like we, we beat number one, number two. Now we're playing number three, Guelph, in the conference final. And if people are not uh, familiar with the, the CIS, we get the OUA gets three teams to go to nationals every year. So if you win that conference final, you're automatically you're going to nationals, even though if you don't win the, champ- the OUA championship. So more often than not, the, the conference finals is more intense than the actual Queen's Cup, which is the, the championship game, because you're uh, you're 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 gonna you're going to nationals like hundred percent if you win that uh, that series. So again, just like we did in the other first series, we go to Guelph and we lose the game one. It was a good game though. We lost two one in OT, and and uh, we came back home and we end up beating them. And sure enough, we go to game three and then we we were up two one after two and we didn't uh, we didn't shut the shut the door and they came back and they beat us so we we had to um to play a bronze medal game uh, against concordia now and with, so with the, the game with concordia that's basically you've got to win to, to to go to nationals if you lose you're done right okay. so it's a exactly. one gamer and that's it one game whoever wins goes whoever doesn't stays home and last year, and last year we played that bronze medal game in Carlton in Ottawa, and we we ended up losing that game. That's right, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And actually, um, the uh, so this year, every year Clark kind of makes up T-shirts for the playoffs, and we always have a kind of a, a motto or a saying behind the T-shirt. And this year, we, we because we lost to uh, right, because we didn't lose a lot of players from last year's squad. Most of the guys were there. Were like one game away from going to national. So the the motto was uh, change the ending. Nice, I like it. And sh- and sure enough, we go to conference finals. We lose game three against Guelph for the second year in a row, and then we end up playing that bronze medal game again. <laughs> but this time we got to play it at home, and um, because some people say, "Oh, you're an eight seed. I'll come. I'll come. You got to play a championship game at home." Is there, it's in the OUA Constitution. It, it, there's a championship games cannot be played outside of Ontario. So Concordia being oh, based no in Montreal. Way. Really? Yeah. So that's, it's kind of a good rule for us, but I think overall it's a pretty bad rule. Like yeah. if they're part of the league, they're part of the league, right? So I think they should they should have the rights to host that game. But we didn't we didn't call the league to say it wasn't fair. We were pretty happy about <laughs> yeah, it. How do we change that next year? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, so we, we it was kind of fitting because that motto on the T-shirt was kind of like we couldn't take that motto any any farther than we did. Yeah, we were back in that same spot, bronze medal yeah. game, and we we uh, we started. And we had a really good uh, good game, and we won. We beat them beat them five two, I think, something like that. But again, the goalie was full five two empty netter. Like every game are so tight, and yeah. we 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 got to go. Uh, to the sh- to the ship, like they say. <laughs> yeah, to the big dance, so, to the, the big dance, the big dance. Now, yeah, so the big dance cool. is super exciting. Obviously, like for all the boys and the coaching staff and everyone that's going, it's a it's a, a super. The only people that probably aren't super pumped about it are the people that have to pay the bills to it. Um, but if you're not spending the money on it, all everyone else obviously is super stoked about it. You guys get there. It's in Halifax, Wicked City. Obviously, I'm sure the coaching staff is excited to get some nice dinners and. Uh, a little bit of live music while you're there. You guys get there. Now, the way it works there, you can explain this a little bit better, but basically you've got um, one game. If you win, then you're in the, kind of the money rounds. If you lose, you're done. So basically you can go there, play your first game on a Thursday, be done, and stay there till Monday and fly home. Um, so for you guys, you have that first game up against some good teams, being an eight seed, I'm sure. You know, in the back of your mind, you know, not that you want to admit this, but I'm sure like, man, these teams are like... And you know some of these teams, some of the records. Like I think you guys played Saskatchewan, correct? Yes. And they were basically well, undefeated all year, right? The I think they lost three games. I, I don't know their record by uh, by heart, but uh, the the lost they won twenty three of their last twenty four games. Yeah, I so think like the they, last were, game. they were on a bit of a run, maybe a bit of a heater. We'll a little bit, yeah, <laughs> right? a little bit, a little bit. Uh, so I think the last game, the last loss was November first. Yeah. 
So yeah, so they, they, they were, yeah. Nuts, and, and things that are, again, people that don't follow you sport much is because OUA have, we have 20 teams in our conference. So then if you go to AUS, which the, in the Maritime, they only have seven teams and then Canada West got eight teams. But, um, so through this year, three teams out of AUS, so three teams out of seven teams made it to national. So it's almost 50% of the league makes oh, it to, eight, okay. to, to national championship. And Canada West, two of, out of eight teams made it. So, and then in for OUA, there's three out of 20 teams that make it. So for us, to, 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 to clinch our berth in nationals, we have to play 10 playoff games. Yeah, which Saskatchewan, is a ton, man. Yeah. Well, for, for CIS, for like yeah. people that follow junior hockey, don't say that's not much, but yeah. we only play 28 games in the seasons. We all play, almost played half the season in the playoffs to, to make it national. Anyways, to cut my story short a little bit, Saskatchewan, they got a buy in the first <laughs> round. Saskatchewan got a buy in the first round. So, yeah, so they end up uh, sweeping Calgary, I think. So two game sweep, they were at nationals already. No way. Yeah. So and then they end up because two of their eight teams make it to the front to the, yeah. the championship. So they, they even though they played UBC in the final, but they, didn't, they didn't have to win. They, exactly. They, they, they end up sweeping them too. But uh, just to show how how much of a grind we had to go through to get the nationals and and yeah, so uh, on the Monday morning I think the the committee puts up like the seating committee they they, they meet up and they decide who who's seating number one number two uh, all the way down to eight and then we thought for sure we would be number eight and playing UNB and somehow they decided to put us number seven to play against Saskatchewan and we didn't know much about them because we don't play them right so we just do a couple pre scouts. Uh, video they, they, they got we got a couple of games in their finals against UBC we, and that's basically you look at the stat sheet it's like alright those guys are pretty hot they got a lot of points and you just go from there but yeah. like uh, like Clark and Clark's such a wily vet right he's been there for 21 years so he's he knows he knows the dance and he knows what to do and he's just like we, ju- we just have to focus on us right we just gotta pr- make sure that our guys are ready play our game We'll give them a couple pointers about the catch one, and that's all we can hope for, really. And actually, the guys were outstanding. Possibly the best game we played all year. Awesome, man! It was yeah, a close one too, right? Like it was a close game. It was really close. Then... We, it's, I, I think we were a little bit on our heels to start the game. I think the guys were maybe overwhelmed, maybe not not by the team, but just like you said about the whole thing being like flying to Halifax and being there and just into the big dance, right? Like yeah. it, so. The first five, six minutes, we were on our heels, and then we kind of took it to them, and then we got a power play, which we didn't score, but then we kept going, we kept coming, and they, um, we, we end up having another power play in the, at the end of the, of the first period, and we end up scoring, so we're up 1-1, uh, one, one, yeah, sorry, one, up one nothing after one. So yeah. It was a big boost for the boys, kind of get their confidence up, and say, hey, we can, we can play against these guys. And you said, like, you get the UNBs, and you get the Saskatchewan, they go there years after years after years. And yeah. As in OUA, it's more uh, dispersed a little bit. It's not always the same teams going. But like, so Saskatchewan's been there for the last four years. Like, right. so they, they, they know what to do, right? So, and being up after one was big, and then they tied it up, and the guys responded well. We scored a short-handed goal to make it 2-1. And I think two or three minutes later, we had another goal to make it 3-1 after the second period, and we, we shoved them down in the third period. That's and awesome, guys were man. great. Six, we killed six penalties that game, so it was it was pretty good for uh, for our squad. And again, we talked about it earlier, but uh, Luke Persini, our goalie, was our our MVP of the game. So that shows how how important he, he was to the squad. And so you guys go sure from win winning that, that that playing game against a team who just won twenty three games in a row. Going now, you're basically in the money rounds. Now you got an opportunity. Like you win a game, now you're in the finals. Like it's it's close. It's within grass. Everyone's pumped. Yeah. I'm sure everyone's fired up within 12 hours of that game. Probably right. You guys get basically world comes down. Coronavirus is really big and getting bigger and kind of picking up steam. Yeah. And I remember that game was what on the Tuesday. No, it was Thursday. Right. Thursday. Cause I remember going, I remember having a bit of a group oh, chat with some, sure. with buddies and we were all like, and you guys are still playing. Like 
I just got sent back from the AHL. The NHL was shut down. The NBA was shut down. Like everything, every yeah. league was shut down. And you guys are like, well, like just kind of hiding under yeah. an umbrella. Hopefully, no one sees us here. We'll keep playing. Yeah, kind of shut down all social media. Don't tell anyone we're still active, <laughs> yeah. right? Like it's, yeah. it's not happening for real. I mean, we, it's it's a we're, we we didn't really understand. Like we're not that we were oblivious to it, but like it, it wasn't hitting Canada hard yet. Yeah, and for it's sure. like a new reading, a little bit in the NBA, and I think the Wednesday night the NBA shut everything yeah. down. Yeah, and we're like, okay, whatever, and then. And we're, yeah, we just kept going. Like, and, but the, the, the frustrating part, and now we're looking back a week and a half or two weeks later, it's like at the moment we're pretty frustrated because we're all there, right? Like everybody was there since Monday. Yeah. All eight teams, everybody's there. We're all in the same hotels. We had the, the league, the, the U Sport Gala on Wednesday night, everybody in the same room. Yeah. Right? So if we're going to get it, we, everybody's contagious already, right? Like yeah. it's, you know, like so, you're kind of obviously you want to finish your tournament and you want to have a chance to win it. But now, when you, you look at the situation now, you kind of yeah, you can't really argue with the decision. For right? sure, like you can tell yeah. you there's a lot, there's a lot of tears in that meeting because what happened is we played at two in the afternoon, but then there's another game, St. Mary's and Guelph, we're playing at seven p.m. and Clark, that's the game, that's the winner we were going to play them on Saturday. So we're obviously at the game pre scouting them and we have rumblings right and uh, we told the boys not to come to watch the game but then like rumors of this and then you know with social media now like there's no secrets really and then guys are texting me and say so what's going on I heard this whole thing getting shut down I was like oh we're at the arena I think it's, it's, it's on for now so yeah, we're, game's playing we're right now, ready. So, yeah. yeah right now and as we're walking back from the ring to the hotel we're walking with um the, the coach of Acadia, which the, the whole team of the, this year championship and kind of confirmed to say, yeah, it's, it's shut down. That's then as bad. soon as we got down, we got back to the, the hotel, Clark got a text about, we had a emergency uh, coaches, coaches meeting back at the, back at the other, other hotel. And sure enough, we walked in the, the, the room and the, 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 the the tournament committee was there and then there's like a couple ladies like crying and like they put, they put probably, they probably put two, three years, like putting everything in place. Right. And and within a day, everything shut down. So, and yeah, they just get kind of, there's, there's no words to be sad to, there's okay. Yeah. It's a good decision. Right. Like it's just where hockey Canada made the decision shut down. Like we we just can't put anybody at risk and, and it's, it's beyond our understanding, right? Like nobody, none of us were doctors and yeah, like you just want to play hockey and, and get it done and having a chance to win it or at least having the guys play it out. Like maybe, maybe we lose the semifinals and maybe we lose the bronze medal game, but at least the guys had it, had a shot at, at winning it or losing it for themselves and it, it's done that way, right? Yeah. And mostly I, I think of our three graduating players which they played their heart, heart out that game, like not wanting that to be their last game. And they win the game and they're, they're pumped because they're guaranteed two more games in their, in their careers. And, and it just ends like this. Right. So it's yeah, kinda, it's crazy, man. And I mean, you bring up a good point. You think of the people that are behind the scenes, even at the NHL level, NBA level that organize the game ops that organize the fundraisers that organize all that stuff. Right. And especially big events like that, where they're organizing the entire event, um, and now it's just shut down before kind of the big part of it, the finals and the, all that, you know, kind of the, the, the big, uh, you know, the big show basically, unfortunately gets shut down and for a city that's tough. And, and for the volunteers and the people behind the scenes, that's, uh, that's heartbreaking. And obviously like as hockey guys with Kevin and, and you, Pat, we kind of feel for the coaches and, and the players and those players that did play their last game. And, uh, that's a, that's a tough one for sure, man. That was brutal. Yeah, there was a, and then we had to go back to our hotel and, kind of gather all the boys together and kind of be new it because of social media, like I said earlier, but kind of Clark made the, the, the final announcement and I, I can tell you there's a lot of tears that were, that were shed in that, in that room that night. And For Clark, sure. Clark said it was probably the toughest message he had to relay in his 21 year career. Yeah, that's brutal. Right? You lose, I mean, like I said earlier, you lose, you lose, you were on the eyes, you had a chance to, you had a chance to, to, to win it or lose it. And it's just kind of somebody pulled the rugs under, 
yeah. under your under your feet like that. It's it's not nothing, and it's not good. Like the woman, like the, the the championship was was canceled, and it's not just us. Like no, we, we no, look at sure. ourselves, and we're like, well, whoa, 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 whoa. We, we didn't have a chance, but it's it's everyone, right? Like the world, the women's world, the heart, like everything's canceled now. That's that's what I said after when you have a little bit, a little bit of time to kind of to look at it and the, the whole situation. It's like, well, it, I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Well, and, and you kind of, like you said, now that now it's done and you look back on it now, you're like, okay, I get it. Like it makes sense now at the time. You're like, man, it's not even hitting here. It's not even going to come here. Like we were all in denial. I think everybody across the whole oh, yeah. world was in denial as it was coming our way, you know, no matter what country it was. And then when now it's here and look at us, like we're stuck indoors. You can't go anywhere. Not allowed to see people, not allowed to hang out. Like it's, a lot bigger than what we thought. And unfortunately when you're in the middle of it, like, okay, I think they're overreacting here. It's just, uh, it's just a cold, oh, for sure. flu, you know, yeah. but um, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's turned into some, obviously some crazy times, but really appreciate you sharing kind of that story. Cause you were in the belly of the, you were in the belly of the whole thing. Like as far as being in an, in an actual championship, having that championship get pulled, like you were right in it, which can't imagine what it was like even talking to the boys that, that night and saying, Hey man, like, season's over like we're, we're done and you know especially going from 12 you know five hours 10 hours before when not even winning being there man we're going tomorrow we're, and on saturday we're playing and then next thing you know like well, man, man, we're going home. yeah it's like getting like all of, all of a sudden when you win right like everybody's your best friend like you get back you get back to you to, to your cell phone after the game and you got like you got like 50 text messages like congrats 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 like yeah. now all of a sudden everybody knows about western hockey and right. what's going on right like it's it's just nice that you know people are following and and having a chance like we, we've all been in that situation like winning is so much fun oh, right? cool, so yeah. just sure. you're there and, and it's just the format with Thurman too like winning that you, you said it like you win that first game well you just bought two yourself two extra games right and yeah. or you lose and you're done Thursday afternoon you spend the school spent all that money to just to fly everybody over and then you lose one game and then you still have to wait till Monday morning because our, our flights were booked, right? So you, you can't, you can just assume you're going to lose the first game and have flights yeah. for Friday morning <laughs> yeah. and you're gone, right? So yeah. you're still, and anyway, and, and it was just, it was just a, a battle now because you've got eight teams there, three of them bust, but the other, like they're UBC, Saskatchewan, like everybody wants to, to change flights and it was just, we, yeah, we had a good a crew work in. Uh, we had a good crew work in at, at Western, like the the um, travel agent that kind of runs all all the stuff. She she was up to like three in the morning to send guys all at six a.m. Yeah, right. Because it's, nice, it's, it's just me. I just and talked to. I uh, talking- yeah, it was crazy, and this has happened everywhere. I was just talking to Reed McNeil today, who played a little bit, yeah. you know, in the HL and stuff. He's over in in Europe and he was trying to get out and he just got out and he said it was nuts, man. He said they were like, when Trump shut the border down in the U S they were trying to get like all the U S guys out within 24 hours, get them back home. And then him and his girlfriend finally, finally got back. But he said it was chaos. And again, nobody thought it was as bad as it was. And all of a sudden it's like, Whoa, man, it's here. Like we got to get cooking. And you went through it but as well at the airports and stuff. How crazy. Yeah, and, and then, then it's for them. It's late now. And then it's, international flights like we were domestic and yeah. it wasn't that bad yet so nothing was shut down really about except for like big gathering like sports events and stuff like that so yeah. but it was just like the logistic of changing your flights and and with all the equipment right it's not just like me you and Kevin flying and changing three flights there's like I think there's 39 of us like with the, the medical staff and the coaching staff and and everybody all the players and like the gear like it was, yeah, it was nice just more. Oh, anyway, so it's all yeah. done, and but you just, you just, there's nothing you can do. Right? Like, you, like I said, like you in, in perspective is 2020. Inside's 2020, right? You always think that, well, you should have played that. We should have finished it, and yeah, it's it really well, sad. I know it's for really like for the players, heavy mostly. and your buddies and stuff. We were we were really into the series more so because we had a guys weekend coming up and we wanted you guys to, we wanted yeah. you to come. <laughs> and then every time you guys won, we're like, what? They won again? No, we ended up, we were right into it, man. Hey, we were all watching it on like, on, uh, on we our, did, yeah. On our iPad well, you guys and send, stuff. And, you, you guys sent me a good picture when you were in, uh, in the ski trip. I, I was surprised you guys watched the game. Yeah, we got it on in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We were thinking, yeah. It was great. Yeah, it was sure. a, that was the play-in game, I think. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, we it's really crazy amazing. though how everyone everyone's been affected by this in a different way, you know. And you see, like obviously the the big world thing, like the things that are happening, whether it's work or whatever it is, and you're seeing you know other countries and everything that's happening. But like, there's so many small things that still affect you. Like like even if it's just a story, like even this, like I hadn't heard all that stuff from Wolves yet, and you yeah. just it makes you think of you know whether it's like you're just your kid, which is a big thing. Your kids not being at school, they're at home now, or you know, thinking just all of a sudden about those last year players that, that are, sure. that, yeah. you know, and you start also thinking about yourself, self you're like, man, imagine your, your last year junior or your last year of college or last, you know, pro or whatever it is, just being, just being done without you knowing it. Like if that happened yeah. to so yeah. many players, yeah. you know, at all different ages, it's, it's crazy how it's, how it affects, how it's well, still affecting you just hearing stuff. Yeah. They just cancel. I know everybody's aware of this. Like today, they just canceled the Memorial Cup. For yeah, this year, that. right? Like all the all the CHL playoffs are canceled. Like I think the NHL will get canceled. It's just my two cents on it, but I yeah. don't think there's yeah. going to be enough time. No, to, I agree. To, no, I agree. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. so. and to go back to Kevin, you're just saying about uh, all the graduating guys. Just a side note on that Ottawa, because remember University of Ottawa's program yes. got canceled yes. two years back. So this year was the fourth year of of, of the program so coming back. So a ton back. of seniors then. 20 guys graduating. Wow. Oh, they didn't get to play. They didn't even get to play one game at national. No way. Right? Like, yeah. There's, there's, there's like, and when you, like, you always look at yourself, and but when you look to the side, there's always somebody worse than you, right? Like, it's, yeah. can you imagine, like, these, these guys, these guys rebuild the program. I think last year they only lost two games in the season. Wow. They got upset upset in the playoffs. They didn't, they didn't get the chance to maybe move on this year. They came through. They won. They lost in triple overtime, their, their Queen's Cup game against Guelph. And then they get there and they don't even have the chance to skate. And 20, 20 of those guys graduate. That's crazy. And that's, think about that. They've been sitting there, coaching staff players, sitting there going, for, in three, four years, we're going to be good. In three, four years, we're going to be good. That's going to be us. And then they finally get there, and that thing. That's, That's brutal, crazy. Man. It's hard to think That's about. Brutal. Well, yeah. Listen, we're going to have to yeah. do a follow up on this for sure because um, we could definitely chat about a ton of different stuff um, as far as hockey. And we want to hear about your favorite moment 10, 11, and 12 from college, from university. So that can be in the, the next one. <laughs> I want to hear about your favorite, your favorite week after the season. So year one, year two, year three, year <laughs> yeah. four, but that week after, as soon as the season finishes, what was that week like after the season? We'll get into can, that can next we, time we have you on, can, okay? Can we have a, a special edition of uh, our senior hockey talk? <laughs> yeah, we can. <laughs> I don't know. We can. We can go senior uh, into men's league and just how that transition is and how difficult it really is. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, buddy. Yeah, hang hang on the line. But uh, thanks a lot for coming on, and um, we'll uh, we'll definitely uh, have to do this again for sure. Man, that was fun. Thanks for story time, boys. Yeah, it was good, man. Hey, no problem. That was bed time. To kind of raise that bar, uh, that extra gear, the first three steps, huge strides in the performance that I might not be the player I am today. 